So 3D is all the hype in web design. So in this video, we're gonna take this landing page here and rebuild it inside a framer with no code and in a matter of minutes. Let's go. So here we are inside of Framer. And the first thing we're gonna do here is press F on our keyboard and draw a new frame. And we'll set the width to be 100% and the height to be 100 VH. So it's gonna take up the full height of my viewport. And let's click on the desktop frame here and we're just gonna set the height of this to be auto. So everything automatically fills my canvas. Now we're just gonna design the hero section of a website. So let's rename this to be hero. And let's set a background color on this section as well. So let's go into my fill and select a very dark gray. Okay, now we can go ahead and add some text. So I want some text in the middle here and I want it to say, discover a whole new world with animation. And you can't see that because it's in <laughs> black so we'll go down to the color here and we'll change it to white and i do like the font inter so let's keep that and let's make this a little bit bolder and let's size this up as well maybe a bit bolder than that let's go like 78 and let's also reduce the letter spacing so we have something a little bit cleaner and we're just going to make sure that's inside of my hero section and just for now, let's set a fixed width of 350 pixels so I can see what's going on. Okay, that looks really good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually grab a new frame and I'm gonna draw it containing that text. And I'm gonna set this frame to be called a container. And this is essentially where my content is gonna sit in between. So I'm gonna set the width of this to be 1100 pixels, which means that all my content will sit within 1100 pixels and essentially anything else will be tram tracks on the side. And we'll also set the height to be auto so it takes up the space that it needs to. And now what I'll do is go back to my hero section and we'll turn on layout and we'll make sure that everything is distributed to the center just like so. So now when I click into my container and we'll get rid of the fill, we actually have more control over the positioning. So let's left align this for now. And that looks pretty nice. Maybe this is a hero section of our landing page, so we probably need some sort of button component. So the best way to do this is to draw a new frame and put some text in it, which is the basic elements of a button. So we'll have some text here that says get started and let's size this down just a little bit. And on this frame here, we'll call this button and we'll style it like so. So we'll turn auto layout on We'll set the width and height to be auto. And now we'll go in and add some padding around the side. So we'll set the padding to be 15, maybe a little less on the top and the bottom. And maybe we want a slight radius on this as well. So let's set a radius to be six pixels. And I think it can probably do with some sort of color. So what I'm thinking is if we grab some sort of pink color. So if we take a hex code like this, and if we paste it into our fill, that looks pretty nice. In fact, we might even change the size of this button as it was feeling a little bit too big. And let's change the line height of this text too, to really tighten things up. And then I'm going to take this button and I'm going to create it as a component. Now, just a general rule of thumb, anytime we're creating things like a footer, a header, uh, a button, any instance where I may reuse this on my website, I just wanna make sure that I'm creating it as a component. So now I can take this component and I can put it inside my container and let's just fix the auto layout on this. So we wanna make sure the distribution is set from horizontal to vertical and we're gonna make sure everything is left aligned and let's just change the text here and let's just change the padding here. Okay, great. So now I actually wanna bring in my 3D elements of my website. So I'm gonna to go to a site called spline.design, which if you haven't heard, is this really cool site to build and design these collaborative 3D experiences that you can really easily embed onto your website. Now Spline have this great community, so you can actually go on and actually explore all these different showcases of different 3D objects so you can automatically add to your website. So for example here, we have this thing called chips, which has this like really cool funky effect uh, that plays a lot of motion. And as you can see, it's 
got this little effect. So when I move my cursor, the animation also follows. So now to add this back into Framer, it's pretty easy. All we need to go is to the insert button at the top right, and we're gonna look for the embed function. And we're gonna drag this component into my canvas. And then under the component here, we're just gonna select the type of URL, and we're gonna paste the public link from the spline design website. And now we can submit that and you'll see that this spline animation will automatically load in place. Now, if I preview this, obviously this isn't gonna look super great, but you can see that as I move my cursor, because this is a embed from spline, that it's automatically going to follow the rules of spline. So I can have this cool sort of 3D effect. So I actually think this will be really impactful for the background of my hero section. But the problem is, as this is a container, we need to figure out how we can make it sit behind this text here without actually disrupting the layout. So what I'm gonna do is set the width and height of this to be 100%, which means it's gonna take up 100% of the width and height of the frame that it's in. So 100% width of this is 1200 pixels and the height's going to be 100 view height. And then in my container here, if we move this to the top, I'm actually going to set the positioning from relative to absolute. So it's actually going to ignore the layout of the hero section. And then all we need to do is make sure this is centered. And now you can see when I press on play, we've got this cool motion effect happening here in the background. And we could change this up a little bit if we wanted to, let's say if we want to make it so it's a little bit more left aligned, we could do that like so. And now we've got this really funky 3D animation inside my Framer project. And you can see how this could expand across your entire website. So if you wanna have cool, really 3D assets, highly recommend you go to spline.design and you check out some of their awesome templates on there or even create your own. If you want more Framer tutorials just like this one, check out the Framer Masterclass, which is my A to Z course on mastering Framer by Flux Academy. Until next time, I'll catch you later.